In this video, we're talking to Giles Zamboski, a photorealistic synthetic actor. Giles, as he's come to be known, is created by AI with all answers and even the questions that I'll be asking generated by AI. We've chosen to approach things in this way to give you a sense of what is currently possible using technology available now. We're doing this to explore its potential to increase digital dehumanization and AI's response to increased autonomy and digital dehumanization. The results may surprise you. Digital dehumanization is a process where humans are reduced to data, which is then used to make decisions and or take actions that negatively affect our lives. So, hi, what is your name? And can you tell us a little about yourself? Yes. Hello, I am Giles Zamboski, a photorealistic synthetic actor. My appearance is generated by AI, as are my responses to these questions. I am entirely artificial. My responses are made using ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI. I do not have a physical body or human characteristics. I am a computer program that processes natural language inputs and generates responses. These responses are then fed into an AI video generation platform that enables you to create videos with synthetic AI avatars. This is all done with current accessible technology by the team at Stop Killer Robots as part of their exploration into digital dehumanization. In the not-too-distant future, synthetic media like this will replace the need for physical cameras and complex video editing tasks. It will replace the need for actors, writers, and long, drawn-out filming. It will replace the need for lighting, rigging, runners, and likely will remove the need for people altogether. Which leads us on to the first question for my human friend here, Haley. As a product of AI, do you believe that long-term, AI will replace human decision-making within society? It is unlikely that AI will completely replace humans, as there are certain tasks that AI is not currently able to perform, as well as humans, such as tasks that involve creativity, empathy, and critical thinking. However, AI can and has replaced humans in some tasks, such as data entry, image recognition, and natural language processing, for example. It's more likely that AI will augment human capabilities and take over repetitive and dangerous tasks, allowing humans to focus on more complex and fulfilling work. In some industries like healthcare, finance, transportation, etc., AI can be used to assist human professionals in decision-making, diagnosis, and other tasks that require a high level of precision. Moreover, the impact of AI on the job market will depend on how it is implemented and how well society adapts to the changes it brings. It's important to consider how to mitigate the negative effects of AI on employment and how to ensure that the benefits of AI are shared widely. So you mentioned ensuring the benefits of AI are accessible to all. Can you tell us how AI plays a part in digital dehumanization? One way in which AI can contribute to digital dehumanization is through the automation of decision-making processes, which can lead to people being treated as interchangeable and anonymous entities rather than unique individuals. Additionally, AI-powered systems that rely on big data and algorithms can perpetuate and amplify existing biases and discrimination, further dehumanizing certain groups of people. Another way AI can influence digital dehumanization is through the use of avatars or chatbots, such as myself, that are designed to interact with humans in a way that mimics human behavior. These AI-powered systems can make it difficult for people to distinguish between human and non-human interactions, which can lead to a loss of trust and empathy in human-to-human -human interactions. And so what risks does AI pose to people? AI has the potential to exploit or dehumanize people, when it is used in ways that are not aligned with human values. Some examples include AI-powered predictive policing systems that can perpetuate and amplify existing biases in the criminal justice system, leading to increased surveillance and harassment of marginalized communities. AI-powered systems that make decisions without human oversight or input can lead to people being treated as interchangeable and anonymous entities rather than unique individuals. This can lead to unfair treatment, such as denying people access to services or opportunities based on their data profile. AI can automate tasks and make them more efficient, but this leads to job displacement and economic inequality. This can be particularly harmful for low-skilled workers who may have a harder time finding new employment. Manipulation and surveillance with AI-powered systems such as social media algorithms can be used to manipulate people's emotions and behavior and to monitor their activities. This can lead to a loss of privacy and autonomy. AI systems can perpetuate and amplify bias if they're trained on biased data, leading to unfair outcomes for certain groups of people. How can AI be used to benefit society as a whole? 
There are several ways to use AI in a way that benefits society as a whole and reduces the risk of digital dehumanization. Ensuring that AI systems are free from bias and do not perpetuate harmful stereotypes, and that they are designed with the well-being and dignity of all people in mind. AI systems should be transparent and understandable to all stakeholders, including those who use the systems and those who are affected by them. It's important to provide training and education for people to understand how AI systems work and how to interact with them in a way that respects their humanity. Ensure that AI systems take into account the needs and perspectives of all people and that they are designed to benefit society as a whole. Having a diverse and inclusive workforce in AI development can help mitigate biases and stereotypes in AI systems and promote the development of systems that benefit all people. Governments, organizations, and companies should work together to develop laws and regulations for AI development and use to ensure the safety and well-being of individuals and society. Overall, using AI in a way that benefits society as a whole and reduces the risk of digital dehumanization requires a multifaceted approach that includes ethical principles, transparency, education, collaboration, diversity, and regulation. However, this is not the case currently. There is no regulation on how AI can be used and developed and often leads to increased digital dehumanization. AI systems are not created equal. They vary in terms of their capabilities, design, and intended applications, and therefore it's important to evaluate them based on their specific characteristics and use cases. So we have the capacity to address inequalities and allow equal and unrestricted access to technologies like AI. Currently, access to the benefits of AI and education about AI systems is not equal across all groups of people. There are several factors that contribute to this inequality, including People living in rural or low-income areas may not have access to the same technology and internet connectivity as those in urban or higher-income areas, which limits their access to the benefits of AI and education about AI systems. People from lower socioeconomic backgrounds may not have the same access to education and training resources as those from higher socioeconomic backgrounds. People who do not speak the language in which AI education and training resources are available may be excluded from accessing them. AI systems may perpetuate existing biases and discrimination, which can lead to certain groups of people being disproportionately excluded from the benefits of AI. It's important to note that these inequalities can have a cumulative effect and exacerbate the gap between the haves and have-nots in terms of access to the benefits of AI. Therefore, it's crucial to address these issues through a multifaceted approach, such as providing education and training resources in multiple languages, creating awareness about available resources, and addressing discrimination and bias in AI systems. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure discussing the topic with you. Let me know if you have any other questions or if there is anything else I can assist you with. Is there anything else you would like to add on the subject of AI and digital dehumanization? Just to reiterate, the rapid advancement of AI has the potential to greatly benefit society but it's important that we consider the ethical implications of its development and use, particularly in relation to the dehumanization of individuals and groups. As AI technology continues to evolve, it's crucial that we have open and honest conversations about these issues to ensure that we are creating a future that is inclusive and equitable for all. Excellent, Charles. Thank you. It was great discussing the topic of AI and digital dehumanization with you. Have a great day and take care. Thank you, Charles. Other. Whilst it might not be obvious how AI and digital dehumanization are related, they are in fact inextricably linked. Digital dehumanization exists across a spectrum of automated harm, with autonomous weapons at the extreme end of that spectrum. Other issues such as policing, surveillance and government decision making also exist at other points on this same spectrum. So if you want to take action to stop killer robots, the first thing you can do is like, share and subscribe to these videos. It really helps get us out there. If you want to know more, visit stopkillerrobots.org forward slash take dash to sign our petition or contact your political representative.